only in Canada. This story comes from my father, born near Toronto, who grew up on a farm with a younger brother and an older sister. So this happened in 1969, while my dad was eight or nine. One night, both parents were out of the house, along with his brother. This left him and his sister at home alone. Eventually the phone rings, and my father picks it up with standard Canadian politeness. Hello, this is Bob. The person calling said that they were coming to kill both my father and his sister, and told them to leave the house. My father, slightly spooked, uses the intercom system to page his sister, telling her what happened. At that time, both children could drive, as they had been doing so on the farm, so leaving the house wasn't too much of a problem. While packing some things to leave, the phone rings again, and my father answers it. Yellow, this is Bob. The voice says, Why haven't you left yet? I'm coming to kill you. In which my father replies, in a stereotypical Canadian accent, While I'm trying to leave, but you keep on fucking calling. I can't leave when I have to keep answering the phone now, can I? The voice hangs up, and my father and his sister drive to where their parents were having dinner. Nothing else happened with the voice. It was probably just a prank of some sort, and it didn't really phase my dad. But I thought you guys would enjoy this tale from Canada. Maybe about to be kidnapped as a newborn baby. This is a story that I was told by my mother when I was old enough to understand what had almost happened. I was only a few weeks old, and in those days when a mother had given birth and taken their baby home, midwives were sent from the hospital to check on the baby and the mother once or twice a week at max. My dad was working so he wasn't home, and my mother had put me to sleep and was just going about her business in the house. These visits were only every week or so, and she had just had two midwives come the morning one day before, so she knew immediately what happened next wasn't okay. She heard a knock at the door, and so went to open the door. We lived in a close-knit community, and there was rarely any threat to safety around there, but most of the people who lived by worked the whole day as they were young, healthy couples, so it was deserted at that time of day. My mother was greeted by a male and female who were dressed in midwifery outfits, with hospital badges and a very polite welcome, asking if they could come in. They explained that they had been sent by the hospital to check on her and the new baby. My mum let them in as they had all the professional clothes and badges and knew when my mother had given birth, etc. They even knew she had a little girl in my mother's name. Very convincing, but all that info is easy to access. The male said he was going to take me upstairs and check over me, and the female would check over my mother downstairs. However, my mother didn't feel okay about them wanting to separate us, and she explained that a pair of midwives had already been that week, and she said she was going to ring the hospital just to check, as nobody had notified her that some more were coming just a day or two after. She also said she warned them that her husband... My dad was on his way home from work and wouldn't be happy about this. At this point, the pair got very defensive and said that they would leave after being really pushy with my mother to separate the two of us. Finally, she got the pair to leave, who quickly changed their behavior to being calmed down and said not to worry, it must have just been a mistake 
and not to bother checking with the hospital when my mom was trying to contact the hospital. What was even weirder is that when my mom opened the door, making them leave, there was another person waiting in a car outside, probably the getaway driver, who had the engine still running. When they left, my mother, scared, rang the hospital, who said that they had not had any midwives scheduled to visit me and my mother, and that they always alert the mother if they are going to send midwives. They also said that they would never ask to separate the mother and baby. They asked for descriptions of the midwives and said that they didn't have a male midwife at the hospital where I was born and to contact the police. Terrified, my mother called my dad who came straight home and then reported it to the police who took a description but never amounted to anything that we know of. Who knows what that pair were planning it's so creepy that they'd gained access to all the information that my mother had recently given birth. They must have been watching the house to know my father wasn't home. They had even gone to the effort of having the uniform and badges made. Thank God my mother acted on her instinct and got them the hell out of the house and stuck to her guns. It's even more creepy to imagine what my life would be now if they had got to carry out what they were planning. I don't believe it could have been a genuine mix-up. They had not followed standard protocol in warning my mother that they were visiting. They were also very insistent on separating the two of us, and they were very rude and defensive when my mother challenged them, which is not acceptable behavior from a health professional. I believe that we were very lucky that they left without a fuss eventually. I hope I have never and will never meet that pair again. Or any creepy impersonators with God knows what agenda behind them. And I hope they didn't go on to do this to any other new and vulnerable mothers. Parents didn't believe me. I just found this sub and I wanted to share my own experience. It happened when I was 13 and it's something I've never forgotten. We had just moved into a brand new house and a brand new housing development. A lot of the houses around us were either unfinished or had families that had just moved in. Behind our house was a lot of field, mostly for future houses. We lived in a fairly safe, small city, and the housing development was very quiet, so for the first few years we lived there, we never bothered to lock the doors. Even at night, most of the time it just wasn't something we thought about. My parents had just put in hardwood floor, so the house was a pretty echoey single story. One night, as I'm laying in bed trying to fall asleep, I thought I heard the back sliding glass door open. I was up late on the internet, but everyone else was asleep, so the house was quiet. I had my door slightly open so my cat could come and go, and so I knew that I was definitely hearing something. I froze, hoping it wasn't the door, but a moment later I heard it slide shut. Then I began to hear what sounded like heavy shoes walking across the hardwood floor. It was a very specific sound and I suddenly couldn't breathe. The footsteps were slow and quiet, like they were trying to make as little noise as possible. But because the floor was wood and our house had high ceilings, the steps echoed down the hallway to my room. Then I heard them stop the sound of the hallway closet being opened, and then the door quietly clicking shut, like they turned the knob, pulled the door closed, and then released the knob once it was in place. It was silent after that. My heart was beating so fast and I began crying. The only way to my parents' room was up the hallway. Their door was only about 20 feet away from where the hallway closet was. I was frozen, and I honestly thought I would pee my pants, I was so scared. 
However, it was silent for long enough that I knew I had to get my dad. So I stood up and walked sock-footed to my door. I stood there for a long time, breathing. Then I ran. It's not a long hallway, but I went as fast as I could. I got inside their room and tried to wake my dad up. Dad, dad. I was frantically whispering. Huh? He was half asleep. Dad. Huh? What? Dad, I think there's someone inside the house. What? Get up. I think there's someone inside the house. There's no one in here. Go back to sleep. Yes, there is. I start crying. That gets him up. My mom also wakes up at this point as well. So they both get out of bed. My dad, sure that there's no one in the house, doesn't even grab something as a weapon. But I follow behind him as soon as he leaves the room. He goes into the living room, passes the closet, turns on all the lights in the house. I remember standing in the living room, knowing exactly where the person was and not being able to say anything. He tells me, look, there's no one. He doesn't check the closet though, and I don't tell him to. I'm so afraid that whoever is in there will jump out with a knife and kill my dad in front of me, and 13-year-old me keeps thinking that I can't be the one responsible for my dad's death. So I say nothing, and I don't tell him to check the closet. I don't know why he didn't, because if I were a dad, I would've. He locks the front door and tells me to go back to bed. They wait until I'm back in my room before they close their own bedroom door and go back to sleep. Again, the house is silent and I'm laying there afraid because the person is still in here in the one place he didn't look. Suddenly, I hear the closet door open, just as slowly and as quietly as before. Then I hear the footsteps again. I could hear them so clearly walking towards the kitchen where the back door is, and they stop. That's followed by the sound of the back door being slid open and then quietly being pushed closed again. I hear the back door click into place, and then the house is silent. I'm laying there crying and breathing, but hearing them leave the house, I felt instant relief, though I was still shaking in fear. I give it a few minutes hoping that they wouldn't come back, and they don't. So after a bit I sneak out there. My one and only thought is to lock the back door, which I managed to do, but the scariest part was that when I looked at the hall closet, the door wasn't closed anymore. It was cracked because they hadn't bothered to close it after they left though I know it was definitely closed when my dad was out there with me. I tried bringing it up to them years later and they still didn't believe me, but that's not something you just hear.